On today's show, the Tesla Model 3 gets spied on the ski slopes ahead of its international launch, Toyota looks into solid-state batteries, and the oil company CEO whose next car is going to have a plug. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining us. With the Tesla Model 3 launching at a special gala event over in the US, it's no wonder that the internet is going crazy for Model 3 stories. A few weeks ago, we heard rumours that the Model 3 was in New Zealand, but we didn't have any proof. But now we do, thanks to the Ecotricity crew who spotted some Model 3s undergoing extensive winter testing on the ski slopes. With it being summer in the Northern Hemisphere, it does make sense that Tesla, which developed Model 3 in double quick time, has come to New Zealand to take advantage of some winter snow ahead of a major production ramp up. And these exclusive spy shots show that the Model 3 seems to have been pushed to the absolute limit on some unnamed slopes. In fact, given one side is a bit dinged up, maybe it's been pushed a little bit too far. And while we know Kiwi customers won't get their Model 3s quite yet, it's a really good feeling to know there is at least a Model 3 or two in New Zealand right now helping Tesla perfect the car's winter performance, right? This week may have been the week of the Model 3 launch, but it's also been the week when two other electric vehicles have been unveiled to the public for the first time. The first of these is the Bollinger B1 electric SUV, which received its official unveiling in New York midweek. Looking like a cross between the iconic Land Rover Defender and an old school Jeep, the B1 boasts an all electric range of 200 plus miles that's 321 kilometers, and will say its creators come with a choice of 60 kilowatt hour or 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, as well as level two and DC quick charging as standard. Designed as a class three vehicle, it'll also be able to pack a punch with an impressive load and towing capability. Oh, and it has a neat trick. You can pass large items all the way through the cab from frunk to rear. Pricing and launch date will be confirmed, but I want to put this thing through its paces soon. A Bollinger, if you're listening, call me. The other EV to get its reveal this week is the Sono Scion, a five-seat hatchback from Germany that its creators say will include solar panels, two-way power transfer, and a whole host of onboard features designed to make it ideal for car sharing and ride sharing services. If you haven't heard of Sono before, that's because the company is relatively new, thanks to its beginnings in the crowdfunding world to begin an everyday electric car that was affordable, practical, and desirable. There's no cemented production date yet, but Sono says the Scion will retail from $18,000 before battery. Given how much trouble small startups have had in the electric car marketplace, though, I'm unconvinced either the Scion or the B1 will make it to production. I hope I'm wrong. Ever since the days of Sir Alec Isagonis, the Crowley production facility in Oxfordshire, England, has played a pivotal role in the production of the Mini, manufacturing mini-badged cars from the original Morris Mini Minor all the way up to the modern Mini Cooper. And this week, BMW confirmed that the Crowley plant will soon become home to the all-new Mini E2, the second car to wear the Mini E badge, and the first mass-produced all-electric Mini you'll be able to buy outright. Production will begin there in 2019, so expect a production Mini E reveal sometime next year. By now, you probably all know that Toyota has something of a love-hate relationship with electric cars, openly seemingly to focus on hydrogen fuel cell technology rather than battery electric technology. But this week, we heard that Toyota is working on a brand new plug-in car for launch by 2022, which will feature a solid-state battery pack. Unlike a conventional modern electric car battery pack, which uses a liquid electrolyte inside the battery, solid state batteries use a solid electrolyte. Current solid state battery technology isn't quite ready for prime time yet, but recent breakthroughs have yielded battery packs that are more energy dense, can store more energy per unit volume, and recharge far faster than current battery tech. It's also unclear right now if Toyota has invested in solid state battery technology, but if it has and it manages to bring this car to market, things could get very interesting indeed. 
With all the attention focused on Model 3 this week, you may have missed the news that Tesla has made some quiet changes to the Model S and Model X, including announcing the removal of the Model S 75 and making only dual-motor Model S cars from now on, replacing the 75 kWh battery pack with a software-locked 85 kWh pack on entry-level cars, and adding premium lighting and air suspension as standard on all Model S and Model X. Gone too are leather seats, replaced by a vegan-friendly premium synthetic leather, a switch which should earn Tesla some extra brownie points from vegan and vegetarian customers and those concerned with the carbon footprint of farming leather. There are also a few other tweaks to packages too, so follow the show note link to find out more. After the Model 3 launches, the next big plug-in car to hit the market will be the next-generation Nissan LEAF, which is due to get its unveiling in just over one month's time. And this week, we got some spy shots from France, courtesy of Nicolas Dufresne, showing a prototype next-gen Nissan LEAF's dashboard, showing a 99% state of charge and an indicated range of 256 kilometers, which is about 156 miles. This, I think, indicates that Nissan is preparing both a 40 kilowatt hour LEAF for market this year, as well as a 60 kilowatt hour LEAF, meaning the next-gen LEAF could undercut the Chevy Bolt EV and Tesla Model 3 if you're willing to get a hit in range over its two closest rivals. Given 150 kilowatt DC quick charging will be standard, as well as level 2 charging, I think it could be a good choice for those who really don't have the bladder that will survive much longer on a road trip. Like me, for example. Of course, I can't say if Nissan will bring the Leaf to New Zealand, but with performance like that, I think it would be stupid not to. What do you think? And finally, over the past few years, we've seen the fossil fuel industry slowly come to that oh, bugger moment when it comes to realizing that electric cars are not only here to stay, but taking away some of their petrol and diesel customers too. Well, this week, we saw the ultimate evolution of that when Shell CEO Ben Van Buren told Bloomberg during a live TV interview that his next car will be electrified. Admittedly, he's going for the Mercedes-Benz 550e, which is a plug-in hybrid, but given Shell has begun installing charging stations at filling stations around the world, I think the company realizes that the writing is on the wall for fossil fuels. And that's a big, huge tipping point indeed. And on that happy note, it's time for me to end another Ecotech show. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.